guys today we are going to see about an prototype bot which is an open source created by the regbeta labs and uh, now we are going to create our ross workspace using the linux commands first we are going to do mkdir which is used to create an uh, empty directory and give your uh, name or workspace name like in simulation slash workstation ws uh, enter it after uh, create an uh, uh, directory now you are going to the directory using cd command uh, after uh, going to the, the directory, you know, we are going to create an SRC folder, which is a source folder. All our uh, source commands, source codes are available on that SRC folder. After creating the SRC folder using the MKDR command, directory command, uh, we are going to make an catkin init workspace, uh, which will be make that uh, catkin init workspace by cmake files into that SRC folder. After making that uh, catkin init workspace, we are going to make catkin make, which will be built in a devil build and uh, src folder after making that catkin edit workspace we need to source it into our bash src folder after source it only we can launch our uh, simulation into the visible environment first we need to source source simulation underscore ws david setup dot bash which will be set into your bash folder Now we are going to do our simulation. First, we need to go to our directory using that cd command. cd is used to go to our directory. Now we are going to take a GitHub account of Rigbeta Labs and clone it into our SRC folder, sensors folder. We're gonna get copy that link from the GitHub, get clone that link. We need to paste it on our terminal. After paste it on our terminal, it takes some time to clone in our SRC folder. After clone it, uh, we need to make another time catkin make workspace. So only that uh, cloned uh, cloned SRC photo so source codes or will be built into our uh, ROS workstation. Mm -hmm. After cloning, uh, we need to see what are the files available on uh, that one. Tata is uh, uh, Tata is visible. Tata is an always like that. Uh, directories are available on that cloned one. After cloning. We need to make catkin workspace. After our phase, we are going to launch our uh, Vesibo environment using the ROS launch, Vesibo dot launch. Okay. After launching the Vesibo, we are going to do teleoperation uh, using a ROS run teleoperate keyboard. This is a node which will be give a PWS signal to our robot. In simulation, we have the plugins to sacrifice, which is in a differential rate plugin. Which have a topics of CMD well that CMD will subscribe to ROS teleoptistic reboot node. That node will be give that uh, commands to move the robot in a forward, forward, backward, and reverse motion using that keyboard uh, commands. Now you see our uh, keyboard command. Now I pressing I, the robot is moving in forward motion. Using K, I'm going to stop our, my robot. Now we are going to open our virtual joystick using a uh, RQD graph using that RQD graph, which this is also visualization software. Using uh, RQD graph, we are going to make an uh, virtual joystick. Using RQD graph, we can uh, visualize what are the topics run on our workspace. And uh, much more benefits using an uh, RQD graph, we can visualize our uh, camera image and uh, TF data transformation data. Transformation data is nothing but some coordination frame of the robot. Uh, like you take the hand is a meaning of that link and joints is an one of the coordination frame using a coordination frame you are going to take the tf using tf and odometry data only you can make the map but in a hecta mapping that two data is not uh, required for that okay your scanned scan data sensor information is enough for a hecta map but in uh, g mapping you need a odometry and tf data okay odometry is nothing but which are the data you get from that uh, sensors imu radar and gps uh, camera that all are under the program camera using camera you get that uh, visual automatic data okay now you are you are uh, doing a uh, teleoperation using joystick mode okay after launching that one uh, we are going to source it in a uh, uh, obvious which, which is known as a visualization software what are the data available on a uh, visible environment it will be reflected on a visualization mm -hmm. software. So some error occurs. What's the main problem? Is we need to source it. First, we need to source it in our uh, bash folder. Okay. 
source simulation degree dot bash of C. After that, uh, we are going to launch our office. So simulation underscore ws devil bashes. Then choosing that error will be gone. Now we need to launch our uh, office environment. Office is nothing but vision visualization. Already said, what are data available on Visibo? It will be reflected in your uh, visualization of your vision office. Uh, the data, 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 data scan data will be reflected on office. What are in Visibo any uh, obstacles is available? It will be reflected on your office. You can visualize using the office. Now we are going to launch our visual environment. Our office is running now. See our robot is in visual in oh, sorry in our office environment. We are going to choose our uh, topic. First we need to add some obstacles to our robot. Now we are adding uh, some cubes. So hopefully so, that is scan data will be reflected on a uh, Obvious environment. See, the direct line, direct color lines are on obstacles, which will be catch over by or uh, visualized by then uh, later. Okay. So that's only. We finish now. Tell your operation. Visualizing the data using the now uh, obvious and the uh, virtual joystick mode. Okay. Now we are entering into the simultaneous localization mapping, which and slamp approach. There are two types of mapping. Sector G, G mapping and categorical. We have introduced some sector mapping, which is um, do with the map thought and order to data. After that, the mapping process using hectare mapping algorithm. We are saved using a map server. After saving that uh, map, uh, that map will be saved into two file format PGM and .yml. PGM is on have a grayscale value of 0 to 55 and then white and black value. And uh, .yml have information about the orientation of map, threshold and uh, pixels values which will be represented in the uh, .yml file after uh, the data mapping we are going to do the navigation track using an EMCL algorithm okay now we are going to launch our visible environment <coughs> after launching the visible environment we are going to choose uh, what are topics running on our office it will be reflected in our so we need to choose that our map after choosing that map it will be created after the uh, create that map we need to save that map using the uh, ROS run map server map saver dot which file you are going to save that name you need to see you need to open on the terminal and you, you need to run your uh, app server node okay i am already said that uh, after running that map app server node it will be saved two types of file okay and the map that cache map will be divided into two types local and global then global map is used into path which path is it will be calculate the path from a to b which path is shortest uh, way in global map in uh, in local map that is calculate uh, obstacles which is near to the robot okay that's a difference between that after that uh, after the uh, mapping we are going to see about the galman filters okay so galman filters is used to reduce the noises on um, uh, sensors data it's the main uh, uses of galman filter extended galman filter we are going to use Okay. it's for a uh, robot localization process mm -hmm. any noise will be occurs on uh, sensors data it will be affect uh, robot navigation stack mm -hmm. so that will be see on a little bit later okay after finishing your uh, mapping process we need to save the map using the map server after saving the map using the map server see this is a map which will be created by the data mapping it have a grayscale value of 0 to 255 mm -hmm. And on dot yaml file you see it will have an information about the map which is having an orientation of map and the threshold values what is the use of that uh, dot yaml file means once you do the uh, navigation stack uh, using the amcl algorithm mcl algorithm is using probability and statistics uh, localization algorithm okay so that's needed some information about the map without map you can do your navigation stack using that uh, using a uh, uh, using that uh, image explanation of float plan okay <clears throat> now you are going to do the teleoperation for mapping purpose print it demand uh, this is an dot uh, yaml file which have an image name threshold orientation 
two types of the information have by the dot yaml file now you save and you are going to launch your node of um, navigation stack it's come some error i think okay now you see what is a navigation stack Game scenario algorithm is nothing but adaptive Mount Carlo localization worms and formatted statistic algorithm, which have a local provision package. It's a fusion data from the several sensors like an IMU, LADAR, and a GPS. Okay, and using Gelman Peter, we are going to reduce the noises which are surface from our environment. After we did the navigation stack, we are going to enter into what are the topics we are need, what are the topics will be subscribed by the navigation stack, is a scan, DF is a transformation coordination or data and initial force map and point cloud some more some more topics will be subscribed by the navigation stack okay what are the information needed to navigation track transformation frame is tf data it's a coordination frame and uh, sensors information from later are encoders real encoders uh, that's an automatic data automatic information base control base control is nothing but it's an uh, Controlling the base using CMD well, which is subscriber to the navigation chart. Okay, map information is so six information we need to do navigation chart.